Hello world, it's Craig. My last few videos have been about decimal math, including using the double and add method of converting a binary value into its decimal representation. Video 123 showed an assembly language 8080, code, which relied on the DAA instruction, the decimal adjusted cumulator instruction, to do the necessary adjustments to keep the output value as packed binary coded decimal. But what do you do if the processor doesn't have a DAA instruction, like you're doing the 8008 or something earlier? We could just create and call a routine that does the equivalent. But there is a better solution, and that's to use the double dabble method for the conversion, because it's got a few built-in tricks up its sleeve. Let's compare the steps for both methods. In the double and add and the double dabble method, the first thing we do is we're going to process the input stream starting with the most significant bit. But in the double dabble method, we preemptively adjust the decimal, which is what the dabble came from. So we're, we're preemptively going to adjust that output value. And then we double the value for both methods. We add the bit value in both methods. And then in the double and add, we have to come back and adjust the decimal value. And that's when we use the DAA instruction. So in both methods, we repeat the process once for each bit in the input stream. In the double and add method, we do the math and then adjust the result back to decimal, where in the double dabble method, we preemptively adjust the value before it is doubled. As we'll see in a bit, these are actually equivalent, but doing the adding before it's doubled lets the double dabble method, do the double in base 16 rather than base 10. And that helps simplify the process. The advantage of doubling in base 16, of course, is that to double the value, all the program has to do is to do a left shift of the output value, one position, and that doubles it. So already, we don't have to go through the messy process of doing the decimal double and adjusting it to keep the values in BCD. We just do it all in hexadecimal. We'll see how that works in a minute. The second trick built into the double dabble is a shorthand technique for adding the current bit. The left shift to double the output value will, by definition, leave the least significant bit as a zero, just like in the double and add method. When the current bit of the input is a one, then the program needs to add one to the output. But here, since the output has just been shifted, the least significant bit is guaranteed to be zero, so if the current bit is a one, the program sim can simply increment the least significant bit to a one. If the current bit is a zero, then the program would leave that least significant bit as zero. But that second trick I mentioned of the double dabble method is that it can just rotate the most significant bit of the input into the least significant bit of the output. And that gets the exact same result as adding that bit, but it saves a little bit of code because we don't have to do a comparison and an increment instructions or any carry. All we have to do is rotate that highest bit of the input into the lowest bit of the output value. Now the way it works is this, that the double and add method, we only shifted the 16-bit input value. In the double dabble method, we're going to shift the three output bytes and the two input bytes as a single 40-bit register. Bits shifting out of the input word, which are going to be on the least significant end of the 40-bit register. Bits shifting out of the input word are going to be shifted into the least significant nibble of the output word. So to set up the program, first a bit counter is configured and the output registers are all clear. That's exactly the same as it was in the double and add. The utility received the 16-bit input value in the HL pair just like before. For the main loop, the program is going to go through and dabble all of the output nibbles, and then come back and do a full left shift of the 40-bit register comprising C, D, E, H, and L. For each of the three output bytes, the dabble puts the byte into the accumulator and then calls a dabble subroutine. And then it puts the dabble byte back into its register. If we look at the dabble routine, it looks at each nibble, and if it's five or greater, then it adds three. The logical question is, why those two values? You know, five and three, they seem so random. But if we think about it, what does the DAA instruction do? If any nibble is 10 or above, meaning it's no longer a decimal value, then it adds six 
to skip over all of the hexadecimal values A through F, right? This dabble is doing the exact same thing, but the values are halved because it isn't doubled yet. We're doing our arithmetic before we doubled it. So rather than adjust any value 10 or more like the DAA does, the dabble adjusts any value that's half of that or five or more. When it needs to adjust, rather than adding six, like the DAA, dabble adds half of that, which is three. So the five and three are exactly half of the 10 and six that the DAA method uses because we haven't doubled the value yet. So adding three to any value five or more and then doubling it is exactly the same as doing a DAA instruction. Here's another trick of the double dabble method. Why is the dabble done before doubling and not afterwards, like in the double and add method? If the dabble were done after the double, with each addition of six, any carry that was generated would then need to be added to the next higher nibble. But if the dabble is done before the double, then we're only adding three and the maximum value can never generate a carry. So there doesn't need to be a carry correction. So that again saves us from having to ripple the carry through all of the output nibbles. Here's the dabble subroutine. We were short of registers, so the first thing I do is that we push the BC pair. Now we're going to keep a copy of the original in the B register because we have to clear the top nibble because we're first going to just operate on the bottom nibble or test the bottom nibble. We clear it and then we compare it to five. Now, after we've done the comparison, we're going to get the original value back in case we need to adjust it. So we get the original value back with this move and then we can test that compare that we just did earlier. If we don't need to modify the bottom nibble, then we can just go on to the dabble high. Otherwise, we've already got the value in the accumulator. We just add three to it and we save a new copy of it back in B. Either way, at this point, the low nibble is done. Now we need to go on to the high nibble. We're going to clear the low nibble and then compare the value to five zero hex. So we're looking to see if the high nibble is above five. We're going to get our current value of the nibble back. And now we're going to test our comparison. If this nibble needs to be adjusted, this will fall through. It'll add three to that nibble or three zero to the whole accumulator. And if it didn't need to be adjusted, then it's already down here at the dabble done step. We just pop the BC pair and we can return. So that's all there is to the dabble, but we have to do that on every one of the nibbles. So while the dabbling is done, now for the double. The shift is going to be across all 40 bits. But while all 40 bits are shifted, the program does a rotate of the HL pair to keep the original input value intact when the conversion is complete. And that's really just kind of a diagnostic thing so that the HL is the same after everything is done. And the shift is pretty much the same as it was in the double and add program from a couple of videos ago where the carry is used to make the registers contiguous. First bit 15 is retrieved so that HL can be a rotate rather than a shift. And then one by one, starting at the lowest register L, the registers are moved into the accumulator and rotated left through the carry, then put back into its register. This is repeated for registers H, E, D, and C, which and C is the highest nibble of the output. After the double, the bit counter is decremented and if all 16 bits have been processed, the utility returns. So how did we do on the byte count? I have that program running again in this little SDK. So all we have to do is put in a value and it says here at the bottom, the double dabble took 44 bytes. So 44 bytes is 68 decimal. For comparison, the same utility using the double and add and utilizing the DAA instruction took 49 bytes. So even with a handful of tricks, the double dabble method brought to the table, if the processor has a DAA instruction, then it gives the win to the double and add method. If this was an 8008 or something else that didn't have the DAA, writing our own DAA would have taken the same number of bytes as that dabble routine did here, which is about 27 bytes. And then plus each DA instruction would have needed to be replaced with a call, which overall would have taken another 12 bytes. So to compare apples to apples, the double and add method would have taken 88 bytes if we wrote our own DAA routine compared to 68 bytes for the double dabble method. So it's good to know that these tricks that the double dabble brought to the table actually gave that method 
an advantage over writing our own DLL, but still not as good as using the double and add with the DLL. Okay, that's it for this video. As always, this channel is not monetized, so shares, likes, and comments are always appreciated. Talk with you later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.